Hey, welcome to Q&BA, where I answer your questions about astronomy and space. On the Google Plus uh, chat page, I got a question from Bob Daniel, who asks, can you explain gravity whip, the use of a planet's gravity to accelerate spacecraft? Now, a lot of the times, this idea is called a gravitational slingshot. That's not the best term. It, it, it's very graphic. It gives you sort of a, 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 a mental picture of what's going on. But it's not the really most accurate way of describing it. So what happens? The idea is that you've got a planet, say Earth, and a spacecraft, say, I don't know, this, doesn't matter, um, a little Earth. <laughs> but I'll just use this as my model for the spacecraft, a littler thing. And as you approach a planet, you accelerate because this has gravity. It has very strong gravity. So if you just sort of let this thing fall in, it's going to be moving faster and faster and faster until it gets very close to the planet. And then it's going to start moving away, and it's going to move slower and slower and slower until it, it, until it escapes, basically. Now, the thing is, uh, Galileo, who first was basically testing how gravity works and all this sort of stuff hundreds of years ago, realized that you can't get more energy out of a system than you put into it. So in other words, if I let go of a rock from, uh, uh, say, three meters off the ground. If I let go of a ball and, and it hits the ground, it can't bounce up higher than I let go of it unless I throw it down. If I just let go, the gravity of the Earth is going to accelerate it to a certain velocity until it hits the ground, and then it's going to bounce up and it's going to decelerate, and at the very best, at 100% efficiency, and I get all the energy out I possibly can, it'll just come back to exactly where I let go of it. It can't be higher. And in real life, it would be lower because there's air resistance, and, and you lose energy when you compress it. It hits the ground and bounces back up. So that's why a ball goes boing, 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 boing like that. And it's the same thing if you're in space. If I have an object coming in at, say, I'll just make up a number, 20 kilometers per second, sort of a typical interplanetary speed. When it gets near the Earth, it's accelerating. So it's 20 and then 21, 22. It might get up to 25, 26, 27 kilometers per second. But then as it leaves, it slows down. And when it's far away from the Earth, it can't be moving any faster than the speed it originally had. So it'll be moving 20 kilometers a second again. And you might think, but if that's true, then how is it that we take spacecraft and shoot them past Jupiter, we even shoot them past Earth and Mars, a lot of different objects, and they wind up going faster? How does that work? How does a gravitational slingshot work? And the answer is, it's because they're not just moving to the planet and moving away. They're also moving with the planet. This planet isn't just sitting out there. It's actually orbiting the sun. It's going around the sun. And we're going around the sun. So if we shoot a spacecraft to this planet, it's kind of catching up to the planet and then falling in. So there's two different ways of looking at it. There's sort of the planet-centered frame of reference where this thing comes in and leaves. There's also the sun-centered frame of reference where you're catching up to a moving planet moving around. And when you look at it in that frame of reference, the spacecraft, as it's approaching the planet, uh, actually steals some of the orbital energy of a planet. In other words, when we shoot a probe at, say, Jupiter, which is the best one to do because Jupiter has a lot of gravity, as it catches up to Jupiter, this thing is not just falling in and, and accelerating due to Jupiter's gravity. It's actually being pulled along with Jupiter in, uh, around Jupiter's orbit. And so it's stealing a little bit of the, basically you can think of it, it's stealing a little bit of the speed of Jupiter. Totally immeasurable. We, you could shoot a million probes at Jupiter and you'd never see the difference in its orbital velocity. But to a spacecraft, which is a tiny, tiny, tiny mass compared to Jupiter's huge mass, it gets a heck of a kick. And you can really shoot out a spacecraft at high speed this way. It's hard to get a probe from here to, say, Saturn or to uh, Pluto, for example, a New Horizons probe, which is going to pass by Pluto in a few years. However, uh, well, because you need huge rockets to accelerate this thing to high velocity, and, and that's really hard to do. You need tremendous rockets, and we don't have rockets that big. But if you use a rocket big enough so that you can send that probe to Jupiter, steal a little bit of Jupiter's orbital energy, then you give that to the space probe and it accelerates and moves out much faster. And that's what we've done. We've, we've done that to, uh, to New Horizons. Cassini did that. Uh, in fact, uh, the Mercury Messenger probe did this. It's really hard to drop space probes toward the sun. And so it had to actually pass by the Earth and, and um, it passed by Venus. It's hard to do. It's hard to remember what every space probe has done. But the fact is you can do this. And that's, that's what the gravitational slingshot is. It's not that it's stealing... 
uh, it's not that it's being accelerated by the uh, gravity of the planet alone, it's also stealing the velocity. And you can do this backwards. You can actually uh, uh, shoot a probe in such a direction that it takes energy from the planet and moves faster. You can also shoot a probe so that it basically gives energy to the planet and slows down or drops it towards the sun. There's a lot of physics that goes on here. A higher energy orbit is actually farther from the sun, but then you move slower. And you think, if I get something more energy, shouldn't it move faster? But it gets a little complicated. Um, it, when, you move, when you give something energy, it actually moves out from the sun. So you can steal energy from a planet and move farther out, or you can give energy to the planet and drop it toward the sun, where then it starts moving faster. It's all crazy orbital mechanics. But that's how this stuff works. Uh, and, and that's it. It's, it's, fa it's a fantastic way of boosting a spacecraft to tremendously high speeds, speeds we could never give it with a rocket because it's just too hard to carry that much fuel. And it basically, uh, because of this trick, it opens up the whole solar system exploration. Planets like Mercury, which are hard to get to because they're closer to the sun, and objects like Pluto, which are hard to get to because they're so freaking far away, it would take you 100 years to get there. But instead, it only takes 10. Of course, this probe is screaming past. There's no way to slow it down. It's going to be a flyby when it goes past Pluto. But otherwise, we wouldn't be able to get there at all in under you know, 30 years or something like that. So it, this is a great trick, and that's how it works.